What's your reaction to everything he had to say? Typical Aaron Rodgers. Somehow, the Packers wronged him. <laughs> no, they're just tired of your BS. They're tired of your bull jive, mm -hmm. and you retiring, unretiring, and they're tired of you trying to have control of their organization. Skip, first he says, well, he's not offended by the Packers' actions the last few years. Then he said, well, I decided to not retire because they wanted to move on. Mm. Well, it sounds like you might be offended. Mm. You want to retire, you want to play to spite them. Because, Skip, he said when he went into the darkness, he was 90% retired. But then he decided to uh, retire, not to retire, because he see they wanted to move on with someone else. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Well, you know what? That's what the Packers do. They like to move on one year too, too soon instead of one year too late. You what? know what, Skip? I think I like to pull my money out of the market after it crashed. Of course that's what teams want to do. Mm. Why would they want you to die on the vine on their watch? <sighs> and they would have kept this, Skip. They would have. I believe if Aaron Rodgers would have be behaved in a manner of professionalism, yep. I believe Aaron Rodgers could have, you know, you know what, have a Coach K career. Mm -hmm. I'm going to retire. Boom, no problem. Yep. But the way he's behaved over the last five years, yep. as soon as the Packers thought Jordan uh, uh, Love was, was able to do a little bit. That's correct. Yeah, let's, let's move on. It's time to move on. Yep. And then he, man, Skip, I can't believe this man went out there and said all the things that he said. But what he did is that he gave the Packers all the leverage because he said, I decided Friday that I want to be a Jet. And so now, guess what? All the fans, y'all got to do this deal. Packers could ask for like three first rounders and they almost backed in a corner mm. because Aaron Rodgers has said, I decided I want to play for the Jets. What leverage did the Jets have, Skip? He says he wants to play. The fans are clamoring. I mean, New York was going crazy yesterday. I just can't believe, man. Skip, I get it. You know, everybody doesn't have the best relationship with the organization. But to somehow for Aaron Rodgers to feel that they've wronged him with all the compensation that they've given him and all the uh, uh, the players that he wanted, that they that some of them, they wanted to move on. And I think that's, that kind of rubbed him the wrong way. They moved on from Jordy Nelson. They moved on from a lot of the guys that he was that he was really close with. Yep. But you don't build a team with closeness. If guys, if you don't feel the guys can, can play at, contribute at a level, yep. it's time for you to move on. But he feels that they wronged him. And so in order to get back at them, I'm going to play. Mm. How do you figure you're hurting the Packers? They wanted to move on. You've been talking about moving on. They give you the opportunity, and then all of a sudden you're like, no, nah, I want to play. No, you don't want to play here anymore. It's the same, Skip, remember the Brett Favre situation all over again. He retired, and then it says, okay, we're going to move on. Well, I want to come back and compete for my job. No, nah, we moved on. And it was the same thing probably in what that was in 2008. So that was like 13 years ago. Yep. But they didn't wrong you, Aaron. Mm. They did not. They just got tired of your bull job, and they were ready to move on. Mm. They believe they have an adequate backup that's ready to come in and perform at a high level, and they need to see this. Mm. And so you moved on, they've moved on, and I'm glad we have finality to this situation, Skip. There, is he going to retire? I don't believe there was a 90% chance Aaron Rodgers was going to retire. Mm. He was not walking away from $60 million. Mm. Bingo. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> Preaching to choir a across the table. Mr. Sharp, allow me to say, just for the record, biggest picture. <laughs> I first guessed this guy 14 years ago, two years before he won his long ago far away Super Bowl. Back on the old show on the old network, I said, this guy is a blame deflecting, finger pointing diva with low leadership intangibles, who is a master media manipulator and who I believe comes up short, comes up small when it really, really matters. Right. And I had to fight with the guy on the old network and then the guy on the new <laughs> network about what a transcendent thrower of the football he is. And he is. He is. He is. I still think he has some of the most awful footwork in the history of the yes. National Football League, but he could get away with it because of his arm talent. Right. Because of the swagger with which he played football. Could, I, I give you could all we the both above. be right? He's yes. a transcendent thrower and he's right. everything you said to preface that. But in the end, that my, my side prevails. And in the end, a guy who's won four MVPs just got unceremoniously <laughs> shipped out of town. Right. It used to be called Title Town. Long ago, far away, when your brother played in Titletown. 
he said so much wrong yesterday that we don't have enough show for the, the two of us to break it down and tear it apart <laughs> and skewer it all the way it should be skewered. But to your first point, yesterday, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Bleepin' Rodgers, sometimes you can do that as a positive or a negative. <laughs> this was a negative Bleepin' Rodgers. Yes. Was vintage, insufferable Aaron Bleepin' Rodgers. And my favorite quote, if you, if you just allow me to start with this one, even though this one didn't get a lot of acclaim or attention yesterday, he was knocking down the notion that he gave the Jets a demand list or a wish list of players. He was just skewering that. And he says, and I quote, my only demand is for transparency. You? Transparency? <laughs> After you lied or duped us about vaccination? Thank you. Transparency? Thank you. I mean, this guy is all not about transparency when it comes to his dealings, exactly. his business. Yes. Right? Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, to your point about I went into the darkness. He's kept us all in the darkness for years. <laughs> and by the way, big picture, he was making the case yesterday he was the greatest Packer ever. And you can certainly make the you case can. that it's him versus Favre. Favre. You can go back and forth. Star. You, you could, but but again, Bart Starr was more of a game yeah, manager, manager type yeah. because he was surrounded by a whole lot of talent. But but we could go on and on. Okay, whatever. Yes. I, I don't even care right now right. about that because he, he he just got shipped out. That, right. That's what just happened. Right. So it's it's no time to reflect on how great he was as a Green Bay Packer. Right. But, I thought he didn't care about that stuff. <laughs> I know, but he did just. <laughs> he does. He, he, he just eclipsed Brett Favre as the biggest offseason headache in Packers history. Yes. And here it is again. And we hark back to that infamous quote from Mark Murphy, their sort of CEO, mm -hmm. the man in charge upstairs, even though the team is owned by the public, by the right. fans. Mm -hmm. But Mark Murphy, once upon a time, was quoted as saying he called Brett Favre after they hired LaFleur right. and said, don't you be the problem. Right. From this point forward, don't you be the problem, yeah. because supposedly Aaron was not involved in the choosing of young LaFleur. Right. Correct. And that was the same young LaFleur who, during the NFC Championship game against Tom Brady, they get it first and goal at the eight, and he goes, incomplete, incomplete, incomplete. And it's 31 to 26. 20. Th 23, 23. Yeah, 23 at a time. Right? The kick and You're right. Yeah. <laughs> the, the young coach says, I've seen enough. Right. We're going to take the field. You're going to take the field. Wait right. a second. The math doesn't work here. You're going to make it 31 to 26. You're not going to go for it on right. fourth and eight. Uh, it's late in the game. Are you, you sure you're going to get the ball? No, they didn't no, get the ball didn't back. didn't get the ball back. Okay. All right. So he says he came out of the darkness retreat into the light and he, he has a revelation that I was 90% retired, but no, I think I want to play. Well, yeah, y y your revelation is y y you're due $60 million. <laughs> $60 million. Who wouldn't have a revelation? Right. It's sitting right there on the table. Yeah. $60 million. Yeah. And he says, it, it, it came to my attention through players around the league that they were actually shopping me. No, no, it didn't. They, they were already shopping. They were you. publicly they, shopping. They, they, you. they were before you went to darkness. <laughs> it, they, they were, Shannon, we did story after story in inside breaking news right. from the, in inside within, within sources the yes. that they're ready to move on. How many times did we hear so, it? Let's go, so, Skip, if it took the players around the league telling him they were shopping him, he didn't need to go to darkness. He was already in darkness because everybody knew they were shopping he, him. He was the last him. one. <laughs> he was the last one. So he, he's the classic. Spin doctor. He's going to spin <laughs> it back in, into himself as as a victim. And I loved what Nancy Armour wrote at the bottom of her column. It was all about him being the victim. But she, she, I'm going to quote her: For someone who insists he's not a victim, victim. Roger sure can play one well. He, well, the, bingo. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. He's always the victim. It's always. He, don't, don't blame me. They're, they're the ones holding up the deal. Don't don't look at me. Yeah, now the Packers got to get the compensation. Skip, I thought you was gonna go where they said the demands. Well, I didn't ask for a demand. They said wish list. They okay. I just told them some of the players that I would like to play with. What That's said. what a wish list it is. is. It is. I, I don't know. It's like it's like a, Skip. It's like the kids giving their parents a Christmas list. They're offering them a wish list of what they would like. They didn't say you better get this, this, and this, and this. It's a wish list of things, a train, a Barbie, an easy makeup, and a skateboard, a baseball glove. Skip, it's just a wish list. I'm just telling you some of the things I would like. 
I didn't have any demands. No. So you didn't wish for Mercedes Lewis. You didn't wish that they signed Alan Lazard. You didn't wish for a Randall Cobb. Oh you didn't say, well, who wouldn't like to play with OBJ? That's what he said. <laughs> what 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 am I, what are we missing? I don't are know. we missing something? And isn't that what good organizations do? They move on from a player. Bill Walsh was one of the first ones in the NFL to do it, Skip. He said you move on a year earlier as opposed to a, a year later. Okay. We saw that just five, what was it, four years, three years ago with New England and Tom Brady. And Tom went on to win two more division titles and a Super Bowl, and he was Super Bowl MVP. So clearly, he wasn't at the end of the tracks. No, he was not. And yet, Aaron's quote was, this organization likes to move on a year ahead. That's the old Branch Ricky, Ricky quote from baseball. baseball yeah. you, you should trade a player a year before you think, think you, you should, should trade the player. Right. Well, no, Aaron, they're, they're actually moving on a year too late. late. You just had your worst statistical year since the first year you started, Correct. which so was it was four years, eight, right? Yeah, it was just four years into his career because mm -hmm. he waited for three behind Brett. Okay, right. we get that. Aaron, do we have to reiterate? I, I'm just get, I'm, I'm getting tired of him. I'm getting tired of talking about him. <laughs> but that's three straight years you effectively had a home playoff game, including the Detroit game, right. to get to the playoffs. Correct. And the first two years, you were coming off an MVP regular season, and you had the number one seed. And you lost three straight, effectively, home playoff games, one to Brady in the Bucks, one to Jimmy Garoppolo, and one to the doormat Lions of the past that you have owned, right? right. All, all on the frozen tundra right. of Lambeau Field. That, that's all they need to know. They're, they're actually late to the party. And... Again, the party started because of Green Bay, and I'm not going to let them off the hook here. Just one year ago, they gave him three more years, years. at $150 million. They did that. They made him by far, far by far, the highest paid player, right. play, not just quarterback, player, obviously, in football. Correct. Due to make almost 60, it's just short of $60 million <laughs> this year. This year alone. Okay. Now, brings me to the Jets. This is a little bit be careful what you wish for, and I'm not going to – rain all over. The, it's been raining too much out here anyway, but I don't want to rain on their parade too much because they, they've they been star-crossed and it's New York City and they have to play in the shadow of the New York football giants all too often. And help me out, have they had a star at quarterback since Joe Namath that you can really no, sell? No. They just haven't. No. Nothing. I mean, it's Chad Pennington. Yeah, you know, Kenny O'Brien. Kenny O'Brien was in that 83 draft yeah, with okay. Elway, with Marino, right. and Kelly. We could, we could go on and on, but they just haven't had that guy. No. And, and a lot of people think Joe Namath really wasn't that guy. I knew him very well, know him very well, and so I, I'm a big fan. He guaranteed he, it, but. He guaranteed a Super Bowl. He didn't play great in the Super Bowl, but they pulled off the greatest Super Bowl upset ever Correct. over the Baltimore Colts. Colts. Okay, but, but he was Broadway but, Joe. Yes. He was a star of stars, mm -hmm. and, and he, he put the Jets on the map yes. as an AFL that, team. That is okay. correct. All right, so they're saying, well, okay, so he's 39, but what else do we have? We got a guy we drafted who's a bust. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to do this anymore with right. Zach Wilson, and we tried Mike White, now he's a dolphin. We don't have, we don't have a plan B. Right. Okay, so your new plan A is Aaron Bleepin' Rogers at age 39, who, since he won that Super Bowl, is 7-9 and nine in the postseason. And they're saying, okay, we'll take it, but we'll take our shot because maybe he will revitalize. Maybe a change of scenery will do him wonders. Right. And by the way, we got a squad around him because yeah. we have a really good defense with some young superstar-type players. Yes. And we have enough weapons on offense, and we went and got him. His, I, I don't doubt that they'll have – Cobb and Mercedes pretty right. soon. I, I don't know about Odell because I think he wants some pretty serious right. money, and right. I don't know that they're going to have that because they still have to fit Aaron's salaries. They aren't too bad, actually, as cap hits, right. given the prorated bonus. Right. But but the point is you got to account for all the above. Right. But I'm saying be careful what you wish for, Jets, because now you're going to have to live with the diva act that can be Aaron Rodgers, right? <laughs> Skip, I can't, Skip, I cannot believe this man said this out loud. He said he decided not to retire when he realized they wanted to move on. If something changed, I realized there was a little bit of a shift. The Packers were interested in trading me. What? Skip, the <clears throat> man, he, Skip, there might have been speculation like, well, 
sources are saying that Aaron Rodgers decided not to retire because the Packers had decided to move on. Well, I, I don't know about that. Skip, you, we gonna come out here, we gonna debate, and everybody else gonna. Have, yep. I don't think it, Aaron was like. But that's what he said. Yep. The only reason he didn't retire mm -hmm. was because the Packers wanted to move on. He went in the darkness because the Packers were interested in trading him. Really? You spend that kind of money? Because the Packers wanted to trade you. It wasn't gonna, nothing going to change when you went in the darkness and came out mm -mm. and see light. Mm -mm. Guess what? You saw at the end of the tunnel. 60 million. That's what you saw. That that's was it. the light. That was the light. Skip, that's what happens, Aaron. It was your bull jive. Mm -hmm. Year after year, the retiring, and I don't know. We'll see what the, nobody knows what the future holds. And, Oh, cry me. I mean, he'd be a great country singer because the he dog would. left and the house burned down and the trunk won't crank anymore. Yep. I mean, it's just over and over. And I think Mark Murphy, I think, I think Gutekind, I think LaFleur, I think they got together and said, man, enough of this. We, we've allowed him, we have allowed him to hijack this organization mm -hmm. for the better part of four or five years. Yep. And it's time for us to wrestle the control back and be an organization and not like a rock band, Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones, yep. or blah, whoever the lead singer is. Yep. No, 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 we're not going to do that. We are the Green Bay Packers, not Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, mm -hmm. the Green Bay Packers. This man is petty, time peace, petty, Ruxpin, petty, LaBelle, Richard Petty. That's any correct. other pettiness that you want to include, he's it to the umpteenth degree. Mm, I like petty LaBelle. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's ridiculous. The man said... The, uh, In and allow me to throw oh, in one goodness. other point that I know rankled not only the Packers but the National Football League, that a superstar quarterback, a four-time MVP, has openly discussed his experimentation with ayahuasca, which <laughs> is a banned drug in the United States. Right. He had to go to South America right. to experiment, but he openly discusses the wonders of ayahuasca. Right. I just I, I just don't think they love that. Yeah, I don't think so either, Skip, but he loves the independence of him being an individual mm -hmm. yeah. and being able to do what he wants, but pushes back against the organization being independent and being able to do what they want. <laughs> so true. why should we why should we not be able to free you we don't want to you don't want us to infringe on your rights and ask you questions, but you question the direction in which the Packers are doing their business. Yeah. Okay, so Adam Schefter has reported back to the compensation issue that his understanding is that inside the Packers, they want a Matthew Stafford type hey, that deal in happening. return. And remember what Stafford got? It was two first-round picks, a third-round pick, and, and a starting quarterback in Jared Goff, right. who's pretty good. I don't as, think that's going to happen, okay? Skip. Well, again, I, I was pushing to you that I, I don't think it, it, it should be more than a third-round pick right. because they are taking him off Green Bay's hands. Correct. Green Bay's just going to have to throw up their hands and say, we're free. It's almost like Russell Westbrook. We got out from under that deal. Correct. Right? Yes. And it was our doing. We started it. Right. We gave him the deal. Mm -hmm. Now, take him off our hands for a third-round pick, maybe a two. But but they're going back and forth, and I don't doubt it's going to sort of bleed on for a little while here right. because now there's no deadline. It's a done deal. He's going to leave Green Bay for the Jets. Now it's just a matter of playing chicken who blinks right. first over whatever compensation right. it is. Yeah, and he's trying to put the ball back in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. all, all, the Packers have to work out the compensation. Yeah. yeah I've already, I decided on Friday. Well, I don't know when you decided, but it seems to me the Packers decided a long, long time ago that your butt wasn't going to be the starting quarterback of the Green Bay Packers mm -hmm. in 2023. Okay. Now, you decided Friday, but I think they decided that at some point in time during the season. Scale. Okay, so allow me to conclude with, if, in fact, the Packers want two firsts and, and there's anywhere near this kind of compensation being discussed right now, I promise you the Jets would be better off Lamar. going after Lamar. Because if if, if you're going to go to any any into the realm of two first-round picks and having to pay some big freight for right. the quarterback, go get that guy right. because he will serve you better over time than yeah. Aaron Rodgers. You're probably right, Skip. But shouldn't you – shouldn't – if you give up two first-round picks, the person that you gave up for the two first-round picks play longer than when you drafted because they're going to give up one in 23 and one in 24. Yeah. Who's to say Rodgers is going to play? Because, you know, he oh, might retire might again. Retire. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think he's got more than two years left. Right. I, I don't know, because he doesn't even seem to have the desire. Like, he has to dredge it up every yeah, year when to you play. Keep, Skip, you know how this thing goes. You keep talking about retirement. You already retired. You are. I agree. <laughs> I'm with you. No doubt the drama will continue somehow, some way.
in New York within that Jets franchise, guys. <laughs> All right, Skip, I was thinking about you yesterday. Curious how you were taking the news. What impact will cutting Ezekiel Elliott have mm. on Skip's Cowboys? Plus, we've got the latest with John Morant suspension. Keep it right here. More Undisputed coming up. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Subscribe here to get the very latest from Skip and Shannon. Plus, go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.